Yves Soriza. Ah oh my gosh. C'est un programme de Marcel. Non. Oh my gosh, c'est juste un programme. From Marcel Marcel. <laughs> we have, um, thank you. Hi, Mauritius. Hi. Hi. Um, so Salut. look what I just got from... Wow. I just got a signed program. Um, I don't have this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mauritius, just so you know, um, we have... Oh, by the way, everybody, this is the amazing director of the film, Mauritius, for a hello Hi. and a applause. Hi. Um, oh my gosh, let me put this down. I have to just say that we've adopted, we've adopted Louis. He might not going, be going back to Strasbourg very soon. Um, <laughs> the entire staff, um, all of the staff, half the board members, um, Ken Schulman took, took you to Lexington and Concord yesterday. Um, so many of the filmmakers, since you arrived on Saturday night, he's seen every single film in the festival yeah. and gotten to I know did. all of the filmmakers. So, and right. his English is even improving from Saturday Thank night. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Blah, blah. Um, That's great. Oh my gosh. So anyway, Mauritius, hi again. Um, thank Hi. you for joining us at three in the morning um, from Switzerland. Thank you especially for this uh, gorgeous film, which I had seen twice, but to see this film on a big screen, wow, right? Mm. Yeah. This yeah. is like a... And for you to see it on a big, have you seen this film how many times on a big screen? Yeah, for, for the premiere in Switzerland. Oh, come over here a little so he, so he can see. Great, and everybody can see. So know. you were at the premiere in Switzerland? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you can do that. Okay. Sorry, I'm being terrible. Okay. Um, so, um, Mauritius, I have to just say to you, this is not a typical, what you'd expect of a film about Marcel Marceau in the best way. This is not a biopic, a biological, you know, biographical film. Yeah. It's chronological about Marcel Marceau, and I really appreciate it um, that you didn't do the expected with your movie. That yeah. you, you chose to tell Marcel's story, not just his history, which I think is so important, and I want to get into that later, but to, that you told his story also through his family members, including Louis, um, who wanted to preserve his legacy, and that you wove your own story in, which has some parallels, because both of you are artists, and you have a father that's a very like celebrated mime in Switzerland. So there's your own legacy that you have in your own art. And then I really appreciated the Rob Merman sections of the film. And also, and I really want to dive into you with this to you, but like how you used um, sound design in your film and archival footage and so much intercutting. It was a very poetic film. So we'll get to all that in a bit. But um, yeah, okay. Yeah, just want to congratulate you. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Yeah, actually, I mean, I, I didn't want to do a film about Marcel Marceau, but at the same time, of course, I did want to. So when I approached uh, Louis' mother, Camille, and Aurelia, her sister, I just met them and told them, well, actually, I don't want to do a film about your father, but <laughs> probably, yeah, with him. So <laughs> I looked like the strange Swiss guy who had no idea. And actually, I did not have, but I just felt something inside. And uh, I was just inspired. Uh, growing up with a deaf father who's doing mime all his life long and you you can imagine as a small boy I really enjoyed uh, my father doing mime. I thought it's pretty funny You know when you grew up and you rewatched a lot of the same mime of your father at a certain point You know you go out for concerts and listen to music and you think okay my father is not so cool he's a mime <laughs> so i could not i could not imagine to do a film about mime at, at all till i met in new york an uh, old lady i was invited in the uh in ambassador meeting uh, and i met the old lady and she told me that a mime 
had saved her life. Actually, she was talking about uh, Marcel Masso, but I did not have any idea what she could mean. I mean, how could a mime save a life of a person? It sounds so strange for me, but of course, it immediately catch my attention. So she was talking about Marcel Masso, and I read, I kind of die dive into his story and I rediscovered all the numbers my father had been playing as well and I realized that they could have such another meaning from another point of view. So this was kind of the starting point where I felt okay I I I do have I, I do have to do this film without really knowing what I'm going to encounter or who I'm going to meet. Uh, and it took me five years to complete it. Wow, brother. Yeah. So at what point did Louis get in the film? And what was your, and tell us, so you first met the, the daughters, and when did Louis become mm -hmm. such a, a primary character in the film? I, I love how you intercut some scenes, and there were so many beautiful scenes with Louis where he's mirroring Marcel, and you know, these very symbolic, beautiful scenes. And so when did that happen? Well, actually, I, I knew that um, as soon as I'm, I'm going to talk about Marceau, I kind of felt inspired. I, I'm going to get in contact with his family. And it was really kind of Camille and Aurelia who immediately invited me for dinner. And I just got there. And I, you know, at that time, I did not really speak well French. So I was just stumbling around. It was kind of, for me, it was beautiful meeting these people, but I felt so horrible inside. I could not really speak French. I did not really have a concrete idea what I want to do. I just had this feeling and I felt kind of a, kind of a strange boy sitting around and talking about some, some feelings about my father and myself and yeah, being interested in the story. And, and Camille and Aurelia, they were so nice to me and like, nodding all the time and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I, I didn't I didn't really ask them could I do this film so they never said yeah you can do this but they also never said <laughs> you can't do this so I just I just kept I just kept revisiting them because I did not really felt that I, I, I had no idea to to do a film with them but then I I discovered that they were doing Fractal, this, this theater piece, which is in the film, and I got to know to Anziko. And I, I just realized that they are also doing kind of a piece which is dealing with something similar I was interested in. So at this point, I, it was for me a surprise. I got to know to, to Louis on this, on this evening. And I thought, wow, who is this guy? <laughs> I was so surprised I meeting mean, him. And I did not know at all. I mean, of course, the family wasn't meeting me and saying, yeah, and we have a really beautiful uh, son, Louis, and stuff like this. I mean, they, they were not offering me anything kind of. It's, it's about documentary. It's not a fiction. <laughs> so um, I was really... Um, I was really fascinating meeting Louis, and I could not believe how he, how young he is. And I think we just started kind of a friendship, just hanging around, talking to each other, and just uh, at a certain point spontaneously filming together without kind of uh, any plan. And I got really interested uh, in in Louis' life at the at the school and dance. It, Everything he, yeah, in, he was inhabited artistically as a young person, and and to 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 film with somebody who was really at the moment of finding his own way in art. So there was just a lot of fun and discovering a lot of things. So you can imagine this film is it's like building up with different characters at the same time. Uh, and just slowly, slowly coming together. Yeah, wow. Um, I'm curious, Louis, tell me what the experience was like for you. So Louis just turned 20, and we, we met him in the film when he was 16. He just turned 20 last mm. week. Um, what was the experience like being in this film? 
truly actually at this place where you're trying to carve your own identity as an artist and you're aware of this huge Marcel, you're the grandson of, mm -hmm. and that's how you've been introduced all week. But what was it like, and did making the film make you think deep, more deeply about these questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And uh, um, with Mauritius, we had a uh, long hour of interview, many, many long hours. And uh, so <laughs> he asked me many questions too. So when someone asks you some question, you, you question yourself. So, <laughs> so <laughs> my answer alone uh, uh, was very meaning for, for me because when I, when I improve my answer, uh, I understand what does that mean for me? Is you, it's clear or not? Yeah, I think it's clear. And I would say if anybody asks any of you to be in a documentary, it's a really nice thing to say yes to. Because it is a deep process of discovery, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the letter you wrote that your mother read for you, mm -hmm. I'm curious if you're still in conversation. Are you in, a, so you didn't never knew your grandfather. You were five or you don't have memories when Marcel died. I, I have. You have a little memory? But you don't, yes. A little. Mm -hmm. And so do you have conversations with your, with your grandfather? Like when you're doing your own creation, your own choreography, mm -hmm. are you in a, a dialogue with him at all? Yeah. Um, like my angel. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, sometimes I uh, ask, ask to him some, something, yes, like, uh, yeah, help me to, to understand. And I was very uh, angry about him before, before uh, the film and before the, the piece of my grandmother, uh, because, yeah, he died and I, and I didn't understand because I was five. So, yeah, I, I think I spoke, I spoke a lot uh, with him and against him, but without answer, you know, yeah. <laughs> of course. Mauritius, mm. oh my gosh, there's so much in your film that I fell in love with. Um, <laughs> and, you know, one thing before we go into like the art of it, but this is actually part of the art, I want to ask one question to the audience first and mm. then we're going to dig in. How many of you knew about Marcel Marceau's World War II experiences and the losses, the losses that he had during the war? Was this a discovery for you? Yes. Nothing. Nothing. So this, I just want to say I yeah. knew this because I have met Marcel Marceau many times and Georges Louanger, the 108-year-old you see in the movie, was in my first film, actually, The Children of Shaban at the spry young age of 89. Um, and so, I, so this has a personal connection to me. But what I will say is I was always so moved, having seen him perform three times, by the character of Bip that he holds, and you did this so well, Mauritius, in your movie. He holds the thousand souls around with him and the hope for humanity. And the way you talk about his art, how his art is informed so much by his history, the way you did that cinematically is so beautiful. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk to that with us. Yeah. Yeah. Because you make us feel it more deeply by how you intercut and your archival footage and things. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 coming back to this question: what what you're gonna do with uh, like generally why why we are doing portraits about artists or what is a biopic? So I I had the urge to to feel um, uh, no, I had the urge to do a film who's kind of searching for the this art who seems to be a bit lost. I mean, we nowadays we don't really go out every evening to see a mind piece but in past we used to it was pretty popular so i was really wondering what's what was happening to this magnificent art form and why is it a bit uh hidden away kind of so i first of all i was really uh searching a lot of artists and mime artists around the globe to see a bit what is going on and i was really 
I was fascinated because art, this art changed in so many direction and it's, it's still so vivid, but it's not so obvious, you know, like it's not this classical mime thing, but it really changed in different direction. And it was really beautiful to discover, but at the same time for me as a director, it was kind of horrible because I could not do a film with like 300 protagonists in it and do like a general film about what is going to happen with this art. And this is kind of for me still the beautiful and also the problematic part of the film that it has so many protagonists <laughs> in it. It can be, of course, a bit confused as well. And you you could be disappointed because you want to see just a film about somebody <laughs> and not about many people. But I, I, I wanted to tell, you know, about this non-spoken connections between everyone. So I choose for this. So how could I choose the right protagonists? Uh, in the end, it was pretty clear for me because I had kind of a formula. I was searching for people who used this nonverbal expression to really change the life, you know, to give something really necessary and meaningfully to it. And it, it came back to my own history. I mean, for my father as a deaf person and being hidden in a society, it was so important to become a mime, to be part of a society. Uh, I mean, on an emotional level, pretty similar important to all other characters, I think, in the film, they're trying to express or change themselves. Uh, so with this kind of filter, it was pretty easy to find uh, persons. Uh, for example, the American guy you mentioned, Rob Merman, in, who's also living in the US. I, I mean, in the internet, my producer, uh, he he f first thought we're going to do a film about just the greatest mime on the planet. And mm -hmm. I, I found Rob Merman. He was like, yeah, he's not such a great mime. But I mean, at that point, he did not know about his story and his illness. So if you watch him doing mime, knowing that he's ill, it's kind of a complete different point of view. And it shows his struggle. And his uh, and 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 the belief in art, how he can change himself, and I was really interested in in this per, uh, perspective uh, for every protagonist. So um, yeah, I just I just kept on spending time with these people and and uh, figuring out something. And uh, I think one of the first person I was shooting uh, was Josh Loinger as well, like you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, after after having met this old lady in New York, and she was telling me uh, that she was one of this child, Jewish child, getting saved by Marcel and Josh. Uh, she she just passed away, so I was really curious to to find more people who were involved at the time and. As you know, this is kind of a generation now who is kind of dying away. So we don't really have any uh, witness anymore. So I was lucky enough to, to find the address of George. And I mean, I was pretty lucky because at that time he was only 104 years old. So pretty young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, I just I just went to his place and I, I think he was really happy to share his story. He kind of prepared in a suit and like, OK, let's do an interview and everything. <laughs> and he told, told me all the story. I think there were some other people also coming to, to film him. Uh, and I mean, he, he just told me everything, but I went a bit disappointedly home because I thought mm, there must be also something else behind him. So I came back and asked him, yeah, I just had a little question here and there and what was happening there. So I just randomly spent more and more time at his place uh, till a certain point he told me, well, actually, next time if you come, I'm going to show you some stuff which make you really, um, uh, uh, which make you um, live forever, you know, and these are my special exercise. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So yeah. I knew that, uh, like, like this person full of, of hope to survive, and he was somebody who just su survived everything. I mean, uh, his son, who is 20 year, uh, 25 years younger than him, is even more sick than himself. So he was yeah, kind of so, so, so fearless. Yeah. And, um, 
And I think this is just an example of people I met, uh, which uh, really inspired me and kept me moving on with this uh, project. Thank you. Um, so, Louis, when you look at yourself in this movie and who you are now, who are you now? Like, what are you doing now? What is your art now? Are you more? Are you still doing dance? Is that your love? And I just want to also compliment you on your incredible dance in this piece. I was blown away. I've been hanging out with you since Saturday, but <laughs> kind of wow. And yeah, even though I said we said I said it would be really nice if you let us on mime. When you started moving, I really thought I made a mistake. I should have had him perform. So next <laughs> festival, we'll have you perform. Um, but tell us about your dance. And I loved you talked about the second skin and la robe and all this. Mm -hmm. Like, tell us anything you want about you today that has grown out of this period. Okay, it's difficult in English, but yeah. Um, so now, so now I'm still a dancer. Uh, I just finished a school of dance uh, last summer. And uh, yeah, uh, about the skin and the, the dress, I think uh, in my, I want to be a choreographer one day. And I uh, have, had some experience about this. I have to. I had to choreograph for something. So, yeah, in my works, I like to create persona. Like, yeah, Marcel said, yeah, you can be a flower, or a tree, a god, and yeah, I like, I like this part of dancing because how do you express with your movement and how? do I express with, with my body, with my uh, kind of body, with my, I don't know, uh, my, my bones, how, how, do you, how do I express with that and who I want to be. So with people, with my friends, we explore that things that okay we can change i i want to be a woman but i want to be me what what's part of me is in the woman that i create um so yeah and i um i don't want i uh, i am a dancer but i want to i'm not just a dancer i i I like cinema, I like uh, theater, I like music, so it's so important to explore art, I think, and I, I, and I explore art, I'm 20 and I want to catch everything that I can, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and all of this contributes to my art after. <laughs> <laughs> We can't wait to see where your art takes you, and that goes for you, Mauritius. Now, what I want to do is I want to, oh, we have 15 minutes left, and I have two, like a minute and a half at the end of this just to send you off with love and stuff. So let me ask, does anybody have any questions in this beautiful room? Yes. OK, can you come a little, yeah, you want to speak to the filmmaker? OK. I don't think he can hear you. Can you come a little closer? Hello. Can you hear? Oh, he hears. I, ca I, I, can't, I can't hear you, but okay. I greet you warmly. Did you hear that, Mauritius? Did everybody hear that? I, I, I missed didn't the really wit hear. I'm so sorry. In my ears. Sorry. No, that's okay. You don't have to go to the mic. Sorry. What? Just, just, just a quick. 
The Jewish, okay, that's what I thought. Into, that's what I thought. Into it. It was so seamless. Yeah, got it. it so Beautiful. So, Mauritius, the question is the way you interwove the Jewish themes in the film was seamless and just beautifully done, and um, she loved it. She's not Jewish and loved how it just wove beautifully. Thoughts on that? Thank you. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I I just I just consider uh, cinema as a I mean being to get what you experience now being together in a big place uh, just diving into a film and you just you're just really qu quiet but you experience something all together it's kind of for me this this is kind of the art form that you are coming together to see and to hear something all together and I just try to to find a lot of different pictures and sounds to tell the story. I mean, I was like like I told, I was really interested in this period uh, of uh, Marceau uh, during the war time and also after war time. So actually, it's not that time who he's uh, who is really famous. So I, we have a lot of material after that where he's creating Babe and becoming real, really famous. But actually, me personally, I was really interested in this other time where we do not really have a lot of material. And who's talking a lot about this uh, war time. And uh, this was a challenge for us. How, how could we find uh, pictures and sounds to tell the story and to dive into this world? And it's also something I imagine. I mean, this film is... I, I could not say it's like a hundred percent objective uh, documentary film. It's it's really it's, it's my sub. I mean, this is my point of view of the story. I did not had the chance to, for example, to get to know to Marceau or to talk to him. So it's really my personal interpretation on everything. So, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Hi, the, the wonderful film. I wonder if you could say something about how you use uh, the landscape miming against the people miming. <laughs> Did everybody hear that in the audience? Yeah. The landscape and the people yeah. miming. Yeah. yeah, thank you for this great. beautiful question. Actually, this great question already answered it by itself. The, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> well, there's um, actually if you, uh, we, I, w I was thinking a lot with my cinematographer how you introduce this topic to your audience and, and there's a kind of, like if you watch history of mime, you have a problem that first of all they're inventing like uh, like little numbers. It's just they're not doing plays in the beginning. You just kind of first have to learn kind of the grammar of mime. Uh, you do like little stuff and stuff. And then you keep on doing uh, numbers where you start to be a person playing something. And, and, the, and the next step is you can be different persons. But if you dive into a film and you're playing like three different person at once, it's kind of nobody will understand. And for cinema, it's even worse, you know, like if you see somebody live in mime, you, you kind of get really quickly idea, but in a film, it's like two dimensional and it's really complicated. So we kind of had to find, uh, handle this grammar that everyone can really dive into this art and follow it. And uh, one really important thing about mime is, I think, is that you uh, that it's strongly inspired by the elements of this world. So you are fighting against the wind. You, you play with your gravity. So you have like you have this really simple basic layer on on the nature who's around us. But at the same time, of course, it has this. Uh, for me, it, it it has this transcendental and spiritual. Uh, power, would, which was really important for me. I mean, it's it's the world who has inspired us, and we are guests on this world, and we're all living together on this world, uh, no matter where we come from or 
uh, which country we belong to. So uh, it was really important for me to find a, 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 a visual, visual expression for that. Thank you. I'm grateful for that question too. Yeah. Thank you. Ken Shulman. Mauritius, your father, when he mouthed his words, was mouthing German. Marcel, Marceau, mimes in French. Your American mime, whose name escapes me, mimes in English. Does silence sound different in different languages, or is it a universal silence? <laughs> wow, yeah. question. Did everybody hear the question? Awesome. So did I get it right? It's, the question is kind okay. of, if, is so it universal? Was, yeah, your dad language? is mimeing in German, which actually is worth mentioning. One. Mm -hmm. um, Rob Merman in English and Marcel in French, and, and is mm -hmm. there a universal language of mime or is it different? The silence. Oh, it's the silence, silence. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, it's kind of, I mean, you can be really angry with me because the film is called The, the Art of Silence, but you, you notice that the film is not silent at all. And it's really okay if you're angry with me because. Sometimes the film is really loud and a lot of sounds and it's disturbing. So I was trying to get a different meanings of silence and not the obvious one where you just mute the sound. So I think there are a lot of different uh, aspects and meanings of, of silence. Like like my father is telling the film for him, like silence is kind of, it's a relief. He could not imagine to hear something, he says, oh, I don't need any sound. This is too much for me. It's too simple. Sound is too simple for me. I just <laughs> I just work visually. So of course, he has no idea what sound <laughs> is. But like this is his point of view. And for him, it's it's important and real. So I think there are so uh, different meanings for silence. But like on a technical level, if you're talking about sign language, there you, you probably know that that this every country has a own sign language, so we just subtitled all the films in different languages to make it also accessible for non-hearing pe people. And actually, uh, when we talk about a bit about the sound, uh, you I don't know you shouldn't really realize, but uh, most of the sounds in the film they are not. I mean, if you hear a bird or, for example, the train breaks when the Jewish children are on the train, you hear the brakes and stuff like this. Uh, this these are not uh, real sounds. We had like singers, like we recorded the real sounds, then we, we played the sound 400 times slower. And we had a lot of singers singing this movement of sound and then play back 400 times which is uh, yeah. faster. So you have kind of the same sound, mm. but always every sound is humanized in this film. So it, it, it comes from a human voice and it's, it's, it's constructed and it's supposed to be like, okay, I hear some birds or some no normal nature sound, but they're all human voice uh, in it. So this was kind of my personal approach to play around with the silence. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Why humanizing sound versus using the original? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really good question. Really good question, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, I, I think I, I try to find a, a cinematic translation for this idea that as a mime, like Louis said, you, the, the, the aim is that you, you relieve yourself and you can, if you, if you manage to really relieve yourself and become everything you want to, but it is, it is on us uh, to, to do so. And it, it, it has maybe also the spiritual meaning that you have to relieve yourself from you, your body and let everything go. So. I um I was really uh, interested in uh, in finding a, a metaphor for this, and I think uh, as a mime you play elements which are not there. You play 
something, uh, you play a bird in your hand and, and this bird gets alive, but it's not there. So, um, so all the objects, they have, a, they, they have a soul, you give them a soul. And uh, with this technique, I try to, to give the elements a soul in a way that you kind of feel, oh, okay, this is a normal bird, but it has kind of this human soul in a cinematic, a cinematic way uh, in it. But it's not, not something you should kind of realize watching a film all the time. It's just something which should work uh, sub subconsciously. Mauritius, I was just told we basically have a minute left um, to be all together. Okay. Um, so, and I just want to like thank everybody here in a moment, but did you have something you wanted to like, just thank you for being here, Louis, and for sharing your art and your soul with us <laughs> and your dance and leading us. Thank you. So I want to thank you. And Mauritius, we're thrilled to have you. Hang out with um, us. I'm just going to kind of thank everybody for being here. Is there anything you wanted to say? No. no. Okay. He's good. <laughs> the art of silence. Yeah. Um, so I just want to thank you both for this inspired conversation. Mm -hmm. And I wish we had more time together. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our closing night program. Please don't forget to vote um, for your favorite films. Um, there will be a QR code maybe up after, or maybe not. Go to our website, bostonjfilm.org, and you can vote. Um, we're also, if you're on our mailing list, going to be sending you a brief survey, which we would love your feedback on, uh, about the festival. Um, our virtual festival starts tomorrow and continues through Sunday with eight of our 16 offerings. Um, and they include the Fresh Flix and Legacy and Identity short film programs. Um, you can purchase the tickets individually or for our whole festival. And for a list of our offerings, go to bostonjfilm.org. Safe Travels Home, and on behalf of our amazing and dedicated staff and board of directors, print traffic managers and technical directors, theater managers, volunteers, and all who make this festival possible, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you online, and there is going to be an Israeli film festival at some point in March. We don't know yet when, but we look forward to seeing you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having thank us. You. And use the chance to speak to Louis. It's not often that uh, he's uh, with the film somewhere, so he's he he's there tonight, and I'm not, unfortunately. I wish, but you, I wish here. you. Yeah. I wish but you a great night. What an ambassador! Night. Yeah. Robert, thank you. Thanks for staying up with us. Thank you, Mauritius. Bye. Thank you. Charlie, Bye. People love the film. Sure.